Hello, it's John Lord here and it's the 2nd of November or well into winter and this is more or less part 2 of a video of how to make a, a path through an existing border. Now the original border went here and then went across and went in there and you can see all the new posts and we, we didn't mean to make it so wide but when we started we just realized what we could do and we've ended up with a lovely island bed here which we're going to play around with next next spring we're going to do a lot of stuff with that but i'm more interested in this for the moment we had very large shrub roses here and when i removed them because they weren't actually doing too well because of the trees we, we had lovely trunks of scots pine now we might remove the ivy i don't know but we're very very uh severe on ground cover ivy we have zero tolerance on that. The only way to get rid of ivy, forget about weed killers, the only way to get rid of ivy is with your hands. You just have to, you have to be relentless because ivy is relentless and you have to be relentless. One got, particularly in the winter when the ground is uh, dry, uh, wetter, it comes up easier. But if you, uh, once, certainly once a year, if you get rid of all the ivy on the ground, it stops it building up and becoming a problem because ivy plays, always plays a long game and you, you have to stop it because it will eventually take over if you let it. But anyway, we ended up with this bed here and lo and behold we found that for a good half of the day it is very sunny. So I was just going, I was just going to put woodlandy things on it like there are there and then I realised it's very dry and it's very sunny. So we'll be able, so immediately we changed our mind. And we have a few plants, we're not going to plant now but uh, just a few ideas. The euphorbia wolfeni always does. I want something maybe with the shape here. Euphorbia wolf always does in the shade. There's a there's a similar one. That's the same species but just a different variety. Maybe that one. I don't know. That's a choice. Elephant's ears love the shade and uh, or love the sun. But once the thing what they look is dryness. It has to be dry. And bone dry here, so it'd be perfect for them. This is one called Balali. And once again, if I was planting it, I'd plant five or six. I wouldn't just plant one. Particularly like these hellebores. If you look at this hellebore close up, it's got gorgeous foliage. It's one of the hybrid ones, and one of the parents is from the Balearic Islands. So they actually like, unlike a lot of other hellebores, they like dry situations and they like a bit of sun. So it'd be perfect here. Now, the thing about these ones, and this one is winter moonbeam, there's quite a lot of them. A lot of them are called Eric Smith hybrids. The thing about them is they need a bit of work. The old, the old foliage can get a bit tatty and it has to be removed. You have to put a bit of work in. So you would never plant hundreds or it would be too much work. But if you plant three or four or five, they're brilliant. They flower for a long time, they're beautiful flowers. So anyway, that's definitely going in. If we wanted to put in a shrub, I don't even know whether you would bother with a shrub. But you can't go wrong with the Mexican orange blossom because they will grow in bone dry conditions. You can put in a Mexican orange blossom. Uh, salvia. Sal this is hot lips, but there's one call. If I was planting some salvia, I'd plant it over there. And I wouldn't plant this one, I'd plant a very similar one uh, called Royal Bumble. There's no white and it's just red. Very good variety. So maybe some red salvia here, a nice big clump. Convolvulus canorum. You know by the silver leaves that it likes dry conditions and sun. This could be perfect as well, but we don't know. But that's another, and it's it's silver. The two others, sedums. The later autumn flowering and sedums, the taller ones. This is autumn joy. They are also very good in that situation. And and then we might have a dwarf uh, or low-grown daisy, African daisy, osteospermum. They would like this situation as well. Finally, well, if you wanted to take a chance, the linaria would grow. It's a bit of a it's a bit of a, uh, a pest. It does tend to see it around a bit, but uh, flowers for a very long time. And particularly if every, every now and again you, you have a go with the hedge cutters, it just reflowers. That's linaria purea. It's the pink one. But there's a good few uh, options there. Now we won't, it's still very dry this ground so we won't do anything till the spring. We're going to just leave it alone till the spring. 
Here we are. This is our mascot, Ted, and um, the only way you can get him to do anything is with biscuits. He's, other than that, he does. He's just, he's free and easy. When when brains were being given out, when doggy brains were being given out, I think poor Teddy was at the back of the queue. But he does his best with his limited resources, shall we say? Now here, Ted, there's a there's a biscuit for you. My mother used to call that cupboard love. Uh, anyway, that's uh, that's our video on making a new pathway. Oh yeah, we never mentioned the gravel. We just we just got a load of gravel and put it on the top and just trampled it in, and that was it. Here, Teddy, up, 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 up. Come on, Ted. Come on. Come on. Oh, good boy. Now, thank you for watching. Teddy, right now, watch this. Face the camera. Yeah.